Hey guys, it's Vanna. Welcome back to Rayman 3. In the last part, we entered the Hoodlum headquarters. I I haven't got a new book sitting. I know. I've been a bad person. I said I was, and then I was like, nah. Because I, dude, we are so close to the end of the game anyway. Not, not, not like incredibly like, oh, we're going to do it this part because what part are we up to? 13? This isn't like, 13 doesn't out of, out of, uh, oh, so, sorry, part 13. When I say like we're close to the end, it's more like, you know, within the next hour, but I wouldn't say, may, maybe not quite within the next hour. We still got a, another whole level to, to accomplish after this, but this is only a nine level game. After that. What is happening over there, by the way? A bit curious. A bit curious, because I know you're supposed to climb this place. This, is, this just exists. This just exists for some gems. Pretty sick, though. I should have jumped the clothes off when I'm doing Oh! Oh, that's a bit terrifying. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Get out of there. At least it's not instant death. Just, just some good old Peter, Peter Hoodlum. There is a lot of hoodlums in this level. And that's saying something, because it's the Hoodlum Headquarters. Like, duh. Nah, but it's, uh, it's particularly, this is, this is, you know, we're, we're on the 8th out of the 9 levels in the game. This is at the moment when they start testing our platforming skills and our combat skills, and then decide to just have no support when you fall down. At all. Nice. Oh. Oh, man. Brutal. Um, but, nah, but yeah. So I, I was just like, oh man, I, I, you know, I was gonna finish recording this sitting, uh, then, but then I was like, eh, I've got plenty of time. I can keep going, uh, and we'll probably finish the game, which means I don't have to recording a fair bit in advance. Uh, so basically, I've recorded this game in three sittings. Um, I've noticed, and th this is this is uh, gloating ego speaking, isn't it? But like I've noticed on websites like How Long to Be, I kind of seem to be beating games a bit quicker than a lot of their averages. There's the checkpoint. Um, like I understand it's just an average uh, out of all the people who are. <laughs> that looked a little weird on my screen. Um, it's just an average of all the people who submitted times. Uh, it also provides median, but. Uh, not exactly in one mode. Um, or frequency, really, but, uh... <laughs> look at all these dudes coming out. You barely got wiggle room, you just gotta... Gotta go with it. I guess the elite dude. Oh, that's a regular... Oh, no, it is elite. Can't see! There's tons of red bloom everywhere. Look at this. I wonder what engine this game's on. Renderware, probably? Just, just basic renderware. Renderware's a pretty neat engine. It's, uh, it's like uh, Unity, you know, in the sense that it doesn't really have um, like any default controls or anything. It, com it comes with a few very stock assets. It's got a basic character control that you can look at uh, and open up uh, for first-person games. And I think that I think there's, there's a third-person one, but in general, you know, you don't really use that. You'd write your own movement uh, system. Maybe based on it. Anyway, we power the lift, and that lift goes all the way down. So even if you fall from up here, you can just climb on that. Steam is bad, apparently. Um, yeah. But I, you know, I've never used Renderware because I would say it's kind of outdated by now. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Unreal 2. Older, really. Unreal 2 was just like coming out this when this game came out. Render web been out there. Yes, before. Oh boy. Oh boy. 
Now you gotta do the awkward platforms are coming down, and you gotta jump back and forth quick enough to climb them. Okay, stuff that one last gem, I'm not getting that. This is a let's play, dang it, not a 100%. Don't even need points if you're doing a speedrun or anything. You know? just, just go for it. I know there's a teensy somewhere, so I'm looking out for him. I don't hear him anymore, so he's... There he is, there he is. I knew I should have looked out for that, and there it was. How many are we on? Five? Five out of seven. That's a perfect score. Ooh, baby. You know, if I kind of hug the wall real close, I can probably get that red gem anyway. There it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, tomorrow the story is. Uh, I wonder, cause, cause video games are expensive and a lot of developers, um, really want to find ways that they can cut time. And one of the easiest ways is to reuse as much stuff as possible. I'm getting comboed by the Steam. Uh, reuse as many assets as possible, um, across games. And I feel like the, these movement controls are quite unique. I would rather if I could stand on the vents so that I can get this guy right here. There we go. Also got some nice lovely gems around here. It's always good. But you do have to ride these platforms over. There you go. Anyway. Ooh, more gems! <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, and that is, that is the reason why you find a lot of games running on Unreal. Because, uh, and, and this is, this is not, I, I would say, the best thing, but in an economic sense, if every developer used Unreal, uh, let's just say, you would probably be saving a lot of assets, or not assets, but you'd be saving a lot of, uh, costs because your company, your workers would be, your developers would be uh, quite skilled and fluent in using the Unreal Editor and all the features of it and all that stuff. Every editor would have its own quirks and stuff like that. That's 6 out of 7 by the way, I just realized. Um, every editor would have its own quirks. Um, oh, snap, we do have to find another one of these. Nice. This one's a little awkward because you gotta knock on this guy. I love that knock on wood sound, it's great. Anyway, that's enough for him to let me get grabbed. Now this guy, yeah, he doesn't give you a lot of room. Uh, I'm gonna sound like a speedrun when I ask, can I recycle him? Nice! <laughs> they make the health bar just a tad smaller. So yeah. Um, moral, moral is, yeah, if everyone was using the same engine, cost would be saved, but the problem is, of course, uh, competitive nature. And a lot of people want the best engine because then uh, it ends up... Sorry, a lot of people want to be using the best engine for the job. Um, and that's, that's why... A lot of games nowadays are coming out as first-person shooters. That's actually why I believe the first-person shooter market is a lot bigger because they realize that it kind of sells and then on top of that they can make games for a lot cheaper because uh, they can reuse a lot of assets from uh, other shooters that they've made. And in fact a lot of these uh, shooter engines already have movement controls that they can just easily use. You gotta use time just to stop and do the little little there. This reminds me of a... Uh, oh boy, I just got all the way up here only to fail at the last hurdle. Nice. Oh. Okay. 
get that combo going. No. Oh. <laughs> I had a good combo, and I even waited a bit after shooting because I was in such disbelief. That that was disappointing as heck. That was so disappointing just then what I did. This is when you turn off the turn off the the game because it only auto saves at the end of each uh, map, and you can and your progress on the level is consistent across that. So um, you can restart the level, the whole level to restart your points, uh, if you're kind of crazy like that. Oh my gosh. Give me help, it's almost as if there's a boss encounter right here! Yeah, so we got a bit of a boss encounter going on here. I, t I can tell there's a, b a boss. So yeah, so... Also, viscous l lava, you see what I mean? I'm supposed to just be dodging right now until the enemies come in? Can't really do a thing until the enemies come in. Should be enemies coming in. Andre even said so in reinforcements. You gotta do the awkward jump forward, hit the, hit the bar. Ah, oh, cut, fine bar. There we go. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's that is the biggest reason why you see uh, lots of people using Unreal. Uh, Unity is good for uh, for people with lighter budgets or more general games. Um, and it seems to kind of just be like the the. Uh, the engine market, if you if you may say, is basically that. Those two engines. There's not really a lot of other engines that, uh, I mean, I guess you got CryEngine, but I'm actually quite surprised that not a lot of games are using the CryEngine, um, uh, pu purely because even distribution, not, not, uh, I'm surprised because of its feature set, because I haven't really looked into it too much. I would think it's very similar to Unreal, though. But I mean, that is, if you if you see the last console generation, uh, I don't have a statistic, but I'd say maybe like a fifth of the shooters were all using Unreal, in a version of Unreal. Sometimes Unreal 2, early on, like Bioshock. Um, by the way, so yeah, so, th so this boss is basically you hit the switch a bit, dodge the shots, and then uh, you basically gotta hit these guys up on the high ledge. And the machine, for some other reason, is kind enough to stop shooting. I have now tricked the machine into thinking that I am either way higher or way lower than I actually am. Oh, we got some flying dudes. I wonder if uh, the enemies of Pixar are completely random. I don't think they are. I think it's just based on the schedule. Now this is a bit of a weird thing, the hoodlums actually go away um, immediately, so... Dude, look at that pro dodging, I figured it out. What we got? What we got next? Oh, we got some sharpshooters. I like to call them sharpshooters because the shots are sharp apparently. This thing's shooting faster though, so it's not going to be as easy to dodge it. That was it. you ain't getting off that easily. If the factory goes... So that action, that machine, for some odd reason, was the main coolant, I'd say? Because there's lava everywhere. And that is why 
you kind of have a Rayman game without a runaway from the uh, lava rising sequence. Seriously. So despite the fact that I, I'm, I'm not going to stop to get health because... Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm not going to stop to leftist them, them out. Uh, this is such a tense sequence. Like, it legitimately makes me af uh, afraid. Because it's just like, oh gosh. By the way, I'm missing one uh, teensy. I know that. Uh, I don't know the teensy I missed. Actually, yeah, I do. Duh, oh, it was the one in the first scene. I shot it. I shot the, the, the balloon. Nice. You don't game over, at least. It's still just regular lava, and it still rises a bit just to like, catch up. I, I love these sequences. They're very, they're very nice. It's, it's... People complain about scripted sequences, but legitimately, sometimes a mix of scripted sequences makes the level so much more interesting. I am also halfway stuck in the lava. No, oh, well, I wasn't really stuck. I was just not jumping. I just, I just didn't really know what to do. Oh, I love this stuff. It's so good. Alright. And then it just keeps going. Oh, oh. There we go. There we go, we did it! We are the best! We are the Baheezy! Not the Baheezy. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know why. The coolant was very easy to access, and it had a giant target on it. So... Ah. Oh well. Surprisingly, Andre made his way up here. By the power of the ancestral scepter, I invoke the Oletis, bringer of night, and father of the canary people. Approach and give me your power. Ooh. That doesn't look like it's added in in post. Nope. So... We may be a little bit too late. But that's okay. Cause... Well, I guess it's not okay. But... We have managed to reach the final level in the game. Or are we still in the, the hoodlum place? No, we're, we're in the final module of the game. The Tower of the Lectus. did it. I'm the best. So with that, uh, I will see you guys next time on Rayman 3 when we'll tackle on the final level of the game. It might be a two-parter. Probably is. Well, anyway, with that, see you guys next time. Bye-bye!